So, here we are uh, on a third week uh, run and today we are approaching or rather entering the, the fascinating land of it, the Ito calculus or the Ito integral. Ito is a name of a Japanese scientist who introduced this and with that he changed many things in physics, his things changed many things in physics and also in probability and Ito integrals and the calculus associated with it, the Ito calculus is the key to doing a lot of computing or solving lot of models in finance. So, this is the holy grail of stochastic calculus and we, uh, we are going to do it step by step, we are not going to be in a hurry, uh, we are not going to push ourselves into too much of rigor. Of course, rigor is a necessary tool of a mathematician, but looking at the diverse audience that I have, you cannot push rigor too much, but I will try to get you some understanding. And in this whole, the remaining part of the course, the book, I will follow a single book which is one of my favorite books in uh, mathematical finance. It is called Stochastic Calculus for Finance. So, this book is written by Stephen Shreve, a very famous name in mathematical finance from Carnegie Mellon University. I have taught this from this book earlier and this is my favorite book in this subject. I would rather like to show it. This is the book and the interesting part is that this book now is an Indian edition, both the volumes. This is volume 2 from which I am teaching. So, volume 1 and 2, there are two volumes. Volume 2 talk, volume 1 talks about discrete time. Here we are talking about continuous time and this both of both these books are very a lovely read and I s those who are serious about mathematical finance should actually procure the copy of these two books. This will be helpful in many, many ways and the book, this books takes you from a very basic to pretty advanced level. So, now uh, what we are going to do in this section, we are trying to make sense of the term sense of this. Of course, you might ask what is DWDU? You just said in the last class that this uh, Brownian motion is not differentiable anywhere. Yes, but assume that this is like writing the difference. It is This is the increment of the Brownian motion we, and we had been talking about increments of the Brownian motion. So, we want to, so the question is can we make sense of this? And what is this delta t? Delta t is a process, is a process adapted to the filtration f t filtration f t associated with the Brownian motion. So, just like in standard integration theory, we will start by trying to look into the meaning of this when this process is nothing but step functions. At every t it is some step function. On a particular interval, it will hold a particular value, fixed value. So, our job would be now to make, you will see that finally, when we will compute things, you will see that this will give us very different answer than standard calculus. It is the quadratic variation of the Brownian motion that would be the culprit. So, here again we are going to partition. 0 t into intervals. So, here we are partitioning where you have this
Now, we will talk about a simple process or a simple function basically. We will take this to be a simple process. Simple process means on each interval T j to T j plus 1 and which includes T j and not T j plus 1, this is constant. So, basically you are looking at a function of this form. So, here is your 0 to t, here is t 1, here is t 2, here is t 3, say I will just do 5, t 4, t 5 and this is t 6. So, what you are expecting that from 0, suppose this to here, you have some particular value then T 1. So, it, here you do not have the value, this value is not valid here, it starts again from here T 1 to T 2 that is why we are giving this round, this is one particular value and T 2 to T 3 it could be like this, T 3 to T 4 it could be like this, T 4 to T 5 it could be this one and T 5 to T 6 it could be like this, just just as you know. This is, this is a step function basically and this is an example of a simple process. So, this is one sample path of that simple process, right. So, on this thing if you, this is, if this is the way you have broken it up, the partition, on each partition we will consider hmm, that it is constant. Of course, if you take more smaller partitions, the same idea will remain fixed. Okay, there will be two intervals where you will have the same value. Now, given this partition on which it is constant, so we will look at only those intervals on which it is constant and that will partition the interval. We will try to calculate it. Now, by delta t, let us work like a financial guy, let, let us think delta t is the position I am taking in an asset at time t, that is delta like a stock. Huh. So, delta t is the number of stocks I am holding at time t of some company for example. So, number of stocks I am holding. I am holding at time t. Now, let us now assume that W t, the Brownian motion, just like as Bashiriya thought, describes the price process of the stock. But you know that this is really not true because uh, price process of stocks never take negative values while Brownian motion can, but for the moment just for the heck of it, think that we are in Bachelier's days, we are not bothering of those things and we are talking about the fact that W t is the price. So, what I have done, so at time t, what is my gain in trading at time t? So, I t is the gain is a process, is actually a stochastic process describing the gain by trading at time t. Now, consider the inter t which is lying between t 1 and t naught, right. Now, I have actually made, I have actually 
what say delta t naught quantity of objects at time t naught and for which I have paid w t naught as the price. So, w t naught is the price per unit of course. So, my total money I paid, so let me write i i t, so what is i t in this case. So, total money I paid to get this delta t naught amount of stocks at t 0 is w t 0 and total money now I take hold on to the stock at time t at a time t I sell that number of stocks and at a price w t because price is changing at every time. So, by selling those stocks I make this amount of money. So, what is my gain? Gain is nothing but the difference of these two amount of money I spent and then amount of money I actually bought by selling. So, I will just subtract these two to know whether I am at a profit or loss, gain could be negative also. Now, think that my what would happen if my t is between t 2, what would happen to this, what would happen to this scenario right. So, what would be i t when I am in that particular scenario? In that case, of course, t naught is in this case 0, so we can write delta 0 also here, does not matter. So, when I am writing this t here, one has to be very careful, I am meaning that I am ending the trading at this time. So, what happens when I am telling the t is between t 1 and t 2, because which means I have held to the stock w t naught up to the time t 1. After that I will change it. So, at time t 1 I sell my stock I am which I bought this amount of stock at time 0 with the price w t 1. Then I bought then I bought a stock with this money that I have got, I have bought a stock w t 1 delta t 1 at time t 1 paying price w t 1. Then at t 2 at time capital T which is lying between t 1 and t 2 I sell this w t 1 holding, say delta t 1 holding. So, delta t 1 w t. So, my to by to selling I totally gain this amount and this is the amount I have spent to actually buy the delta t 1 stocks. So, it will be this minus this. So, which I can also write nicely as i t in this particular case i t is delta 0 w t 1 plus delta t 1 w t minus w t 1. Again, if you are slightly uh, not comfortable, what I did, I know that my maximum time I can hold the stock I bought at time 0 is type to time t 1, then I have to sell it, that is the period of holding. Then I at time t 1, I know what is the stock price and I sell, sell it with this price. Now, with that price, I buy stocks w t 1, uh, stock of the amount delta t 1 with the price w t 1. So, this is the amount now, this amount now has to be subtracted from this one, because I sold and got some money from that I spent some money to buy some new stocks. Again I sold out stocks at time capital T and I finished my trading, Ties, time, time small t and I finished my trading, I got this amount of money. So, this minus this plus this is the amount of money I have now. So, this is a very simple thing, now this can be written in a more general way that if t, so if you have a t lying between t k and t k plus 1, then your i t
So, this is what does it say? Say at every time point before the time till time k minus 1, what did he do? He bought something, he hold something in one interval, then sold that thing and bought the new stock by using the, by using the money from the same thing that he had gained. When he sold something, whatever money he had got, he spent a part of it to buy something. So, he held that this stock up to time t j plus 1 and sold this at this amount, but at time t j he had at time sorry at time uh, t j he had bought the same amount by spending the money delta t j into w t j. And then of course, If you look at the last part here, the same. This into this whole thing into W T minus W T K. So this is the general form of writing I T. If you are not comfortable with that or can't see it, I write it again here for your convenience. It is very simple profit and loss thing. I trade, make money, use that money to buy something, again I sell that and buy some new thing. So, that is that is the whole thing, that is the whole idea, that is the way the market actually operates. This I T so this I T is often written as I zero to small T. So, this whole thing is written in a shorthand like this, that is how we give meaning to this thing. So, this is what we want to write as DWT, it is a shorthand writing, it is not exactly the differential, there is nothing like a differential of Brownian motion, it is a shorthand writing. Now, I t then itself is a stochastic process. So, I t is called the Ito integral of the simple process delta t. So, I t is called the Ito integral of the process delta t. So, you are taking Ito integral of a stochastic process that is very important. And it is not like you integrating a random variable, integrating random variable is just like integrating any function right that is. So, here what you create is also a stochastic process, your integral itself is not a number, but your integral itself is also a stochastic process, I t is a stochastic process. So, you see there is a huge leap or huge difference in the thought process. So, when you come to the stochastic world, your life completely changes. Now, what are the key properties of this stochastic process? The key properties are following. The number one property is that the Ito integral properties, if you have time, we will prove any one of them. The number one property is that Ito integral is a martingale with respect to the filtration F t adapted to the Brownian motion W. The Ito integral is a martingale.
eto integral. So, when I am taking integral do not think it is an integration, it is a number, it is not a definite integral. Eto integral i t means eto integral is a stochastic process, eto integral i t is a Martingale. Martingale essentially processes which possibly are trying to maintain status quo at every time. Number two, proving this is not so simple, it needs little bit of work, but nothing else, it is just the computation is complex. Another thing is called Ito isometry. We will see what is the meaning of Ito isometry. Ito isometry says the following. Expectation of i square t. So, expectation of the random variable i square t square is equal to expectation of 0 to t delta square u du. Now, why it is called isometry would be clear if you only uh, know something about L2 norms. So, you look at this quantity E i square t. So, if I write here as E i square t, this simply means integral right, whatever is the 0 to t in, in sorry in, in integral over not 0 to t, integral over sample space whatever the sample space is of i square t d p so this i because you are assuming that this is finite I am assuming that this is finite. So, once you assume that this is finite, you are assuming that i square i square t actually belongs to the capital L2 of L2 space of this is only for those who know this stuff, this function analysis. Those who do not, do not bother, think that Ito divides this formula. Isometry means the they have similar distances. So, distance in the original space between two points and distance in the range space between the two functional values are similar, then we call it isometry. So, this actually means if you look at it very carefully, it is if you take i no sorry no not i i t is in L 2 f not i square. So, i t this is a square of the L 2 norm. So, this is nothing but the square of the L 2 norm. So, this is I 2 is in infinite dimensional space in this I mean I t itself is an inter. So, the Ito integral itself is an element of L 2. So, it is in the infinite dimensional space is an infinite dimensional object. So, it is so, in, so interesting things are coming in and if you look at this, so they are telling that this is expectation of this. So, you are telling that this, this the distance the norm of this is computed is, is nothing but the expected value of this integral, because this integral if you take the expected value of this integral means what? This is a normal integral, this is a standard Lebesgue integration, right. Here I am not tre treating delta square as a function, function of omega basically, keeping the u fixed, but I am treating it as a function of u itself. So, for every sample path, you can compute this. 
as t changes fix up the sample path sample the scenario omega and you can compute this and then you take expectation over all the sample path average over all the sample path that is exactly same as the norm of L2 norm of this that is the idea. Now comes a very very important property. So, here all these things are doing been done for the Ito integral for the simple process delta t. We have not spoken about Ito integral for a general case and that we will come tomorrow in the next uh, other in the next class. The very important thing that we should uh, now understand that just like Brownian motion the Ito integral itself has a quadratic variation and what is that quadratic variation. So, Ito integral does not have a 0 quadratic variation Ito integral itself has a quadratic variation. The Ito integral states the, the quadratic variation of the Ito integral is been given by this simple thing. It is amazing the answer. So, the Ito isometry says the following. that the L2 norm of i the integral is nothing but the expectation of the quadratic variation. See the quadratic variation itself whether it is of a Brownian motion or the whether of this integral itself is a stochastic process that is the thing that you have to take into account. The quadratic variation, but it is very interesting the quadratic variation is a stochastic process, but for every t it gives you a number every t it is a fixed number. Mane for a given sample path for every omega it will calculate a number very nicely. So, mane for every omega whatever be your omega whatever be your path for a given t therefore, whatever be your omega this will be the answer. So, it, it is path independent essentially. So, the quadratic variation itself itself is a stochastic process. So, what we have learned now learned is completely for the case where delta t is that simple function that is all delta t is this. So, I know that delta t given the t delta t varies like this. So, given any omega if it, if it is in the time interval this delta t will have this values that is all it does not depend on what omega. Right. So, delta t is the simplest simplest function to so, delta t sorry I did made a mistake. So, given an omega delta t will take this 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 values in this interval if you change the omega it will take some other values in these fixed intervals. So, the intervals are fixed and in those intervals it is taking constant value, but it will depend on the omega. So, you take change the omega you will have different values. So, and that omega will change the value of i t. So, that making i t a stochastic process similarly this quadratic variation itself is a stochastic process. So, this is a very very important understanding that we are essentially generating not numbers we are at every step generating quadratic pro, a stochastic processes. So, this is something of very important thing that we have to keep in mind. So, when we are going to talk about general integral when w this is some adapted process delta t is an adapted process not a simple process like this that is not step function type thing. Then we proceed as we do in integration theory. We write the money we approximate the given function delta t in as a 
approximate we approximate it by a family of simple processes simple functions and then you take the integral over the simple functions and then take the limit that is the idea we are going to apply and then we will see for one particular calculation what will happen and there is a so we had learnt in the last class at the quadratic variation of course people are should ask what is the what is when we take the limits of those q pi uh, what was what sort of limit it was we proved that what the limit we get is a limit in or the convergence that we get that we can always have convergence in probability but under slight mod and also if we just bother about the fact that the variance is uh, is uh, the variance is zero and the expectation is t then we have something called l2 convergence which i am not going to bother you with or else by slightly modifying the definition by slightly modifying the requirements or the behavior of the partition we can show that it can be made to be convergent almost surely so you you just have to remember this but remember this is also a process stochastic process sometimes now because we have started using this dwt symbol we will use this shorthand this this actually means quadratic variation this is this is the meaning of this we will very this is nothing but the dif, these two differences right the different square basically so we will use this shorthand please note that this thing whole thing is a shorthand shorthand to write quadratic variation but this shorthand would be very helpful when we do finance very extremely helpful to use this shorthand so thank you and tomorrow we are going to talk about uh, some more interesting facts doing eto integral for a general integral and all these properties that you have learnt here would be actually translated to that general integral and then we will do an example